All right, everybody, I'm Logan Alec. I'm a CPA, and in this video, I'm reviewing yet another investing platform. Today, I'm reviewing Betterment. Like all of my investing platform reviews, how this one is going to work is I am going to first walk you through Betterment right here on screen, giving you a full walkthrough of the platform. Then after that, I will be telling you what I believe to be the pros and cons of Betterment. Then finally, at the end of the video, I'll give you my take on what I believe to be the kinds of people or situations in which Betterment is probably a good fit, as well as a couple examples of people or situations where Betterment might not be the way to go. Before I get into it, I just want to shamelessly self-promote. If after watching this review, you think Betterment is the right choice for you, I do have my affiliate link to Betterment in the description below. If you use that link to sign up for Betterment and open your account, the channel will receive a small commission. This is no extra cost to you, but really helps me out so that it continues to be worth my while to create content like this for all of you. All right, let's get into it. First of all, what is Betterment? Betterment by its own admission is a robo-advisor. What does that mean? This means that in contrast to platforms like Robinhood or Webull, where you basically uh, you know, deposit money, then you're on your own, right? You purchase your own stocks and you sell them and handle all the investments yourself. With Betterment, you deposit money into Betterment and Betterment determines how to invest your money for you for a small fee. I will talk about the fees later in this video, but this is why it's called a robo-advisor, right? Robo, because uh, you know when, when Betterment invests your money for you, it's done, being, be, uh, it's done via an algorithm, right? Based on your age, risk tolerance, capital, other factors. And advisor, because well, Betterment's an advisor. It literally determines how your money should and will be invested. This sounds a bit vague and high level, I know, right? But it will make sense as I walk through the Betterment platform and show you what I'm talking about. So let's get started. I'm gonna start off by walking you through Betterment uh, on my phone. You can obviously do this all on your desktop computer as well. And in fact, I will hop on my desktop later in this video, but for now, I'm on mobile. Um, first of all, right, you would use my affiliate link. You would be taken to the home screen here where it says start investing and get up to one year managed free. What is this offer Betterment's running right now? Well, as I'm about to get into detail about later in this video, Betterment does charge you uh, a small fee to manage your money, right? But right now, if you deposit a certain amount, they'll waive that fee for you for a year. So if you open your account and deposit at least $15,000 within the first 45 days of opening your account, you get a whole month managed free. If you deposit at least $100,000, you get six months managed free. If you deposit at least $250,000, you get a whole year managed free. That's the offer they have going on right now. Of course, it's perfectly okay to deposit less than $15,000. I know many of you might just be starting with, with 50 bucks or 100 bucks, and that's fine. You just won't get any free management from this offer. All right, so to set up your account, you click Get Started. You input your email address. Uh, I input my wife's email address here, by the way, because I'm actually setting up this account for her. I have her permission to do this. I'm doing this because I already have a Betterment account of my own, and it wouldn't let me open another other one for example purposes. So this is actually my wife's account, uh, Caroline, that I'm opening on screen here. So I input her first name and last name, phone number, check the box, click create account. Uh, so now at this point, I've set up a Betterment account, okay? But once you're actually in Betterment, you have to create the separate accounts you want, right? A brokerage account, right? That's a normal taxable investment account, checking account, retirement accounts, whatever you want. So now I'm gonna finish setting up the investment account. Uh, it's gonna be a, a taxable brokerage account. So I click finish setup. I input address, city, state, zip, date of birth, social security number. Yes, this is completely normal. Whenever you set up a brokerage account in the United States, you must supply your social security number for tax purposes. Then you answer the security questions for additional privacy. Then you describe your employment status, your tax filing status, your income and investment account balances, some other questions, uh, another box to check. Then you click accept and finish. Then you tell Betterment what you want to use this account for by clicking a goal set up. In this case, this account is just for general investing. I'm going to select individual taxable. You can also select joint taxable or trust. Uh, trust is only if you have an existing trust. You can't create a trust through Betterment. Um, if we were really going to use this account a lot, I would do joint taxable and put me on here as well. Um, that's for some ease of estate planning issues there, right? All joint accounts at Betterment are joint accounts with survivorship rights, meaning that if one of the joint account owner dies, the ownership of the entire of the entire account just goes to the surviving owner uh, automatically. That's probably getting beyond the scope of things here, but just for the sake of this review and walkthrough, I'm gonna select individual taxable here so I don't have to put in all my personal information as well. By the way, you don't have to be married to set up a joint account in Betterment 
just FYI. Uh, but I'm selecting individual taxable just for the ease of this example. I then click continue. I can change the nickname of this account, but I'm just gonna leave it at general investing. Uh, then it asks for target amount. And this was a little bit annoying to me because it didn't attach a date to the target amount because that matters, right? Uh, I might wanna target a million dollars in this account when I'm 70 or 80 years old. But right now, right, maybe my target is a lot less than that if this is only looking a year or two out. I wasn't really sure what to put here because there was no date input you could do. So I just put $10,000 as a nice, tidy, round target number. Um, you can also change the goal image. When you see this account in Betterment, I just kept it the default piggy bank, then I click continue. Um, and now when you see the screen that says, how would you like to invest? This is where you can start making some decisions about your portfolio. So the default way to invest your money in Betterment is to use their Betterment core portfolio, uh, which as they say with this portfolio, will tailor your investments to your risk level and time horizon using a globally diversified portfolio. It's comprised of low cost index tracking ETFs, by the way, side note, I love investing in low cost index tracking ETFs. Uh, it says it uses funds that are typically the most tax efficient. So this is the typical robo advisor uh, you know, deal, right? This is a typical robo advisor investing strategy where based on your age, your income, your risk tolerance and all that, the robo advisor determines how much of your portfolio should be in stocks, how much should be in bonds. And then they split up the stock section of your portfolio into various uh, index fund ETFs, some domestic large caps, some domestic mid cap, domestic small caps, some emerging markets, international, and then they do the same with the bond part of your portfolio as well. So whenever you deposit money into uh, a, a robo-advisor account like Betterment, every dollar is allocated in this way. There is another alternative here called Socially Responsible Investing Portfolio, or SRI, where, as you can see on the screen, if you choose this, the Betterment says it'll make sure to invest your money, or at least some of your money, in a low-fee, globally diversified, socially responsible investing portfolio to help you reach your goals while investing for an ETF screen for environmental, social, and governance criteria. Criteria. Although I didn't select this option, uh, I decided to research a little bit more about what this looks like at Betterment if you're interested in this. It turns out that if you go with a socially responsible investing portfolio, you can pick one of three impact areas. There's social impact, which Betterment says in addition to the core funds, right, that I would imagine you'd find in the core portfolio, you would additionally invest in two funds that support uh, minority empowerment, for the first fund and for the second fund, gender diversity. Okay, this is the impact shares, NAACP minority empowerment ETF, as well as the State Street's uh, gender diversity ETF. So the first one there, the NAACP minority empowerment ETF tracks an index designed to provide exposure to US companies with strong racial and ethnic diversity policies in place, empowering employees irrespective of their race or nationality. And the State Street gender diversity ETF tracks an index designed to measure the performance of US large capitalization companies that are gender diverse, which are defined as companies that exhibit gender diversity in their senior leadership positions. Now, the thing to know about these social impact ETFs is that their expense ratios are generally going to be higher than the ETFs in the core portfolio, or at least a lot of the ETFs in the core portfolio. For example, the minority empowerment ETFs expense ratio is 0.49% and the gender diversities ETF uh, expense ratio is 0.2%. Compare that to one of the primary core holdings. I'll show you all of them in a bit. But one of the core holdings in the Betterment core portfolio is VTI. This is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF, which has an expense ratio of 0.03%. That means you're essentially paying, and I say essentially paying because as I've explained in other videos, such as my investing for beginners video, an ETF's expense ratio doesn't come uh, directly out of your investment account. It's reflected in the value of your shares. By the way, if you're watching this video right now and you're a little bit confused about some of these basic investing topics I'm talking about, ETFs, expense ratios, things like that, check out my Investing for Beginners video, link at the top of the screen and in the description below. Anyway, like I was saying, these social impact ETFs are more expensive than the ETFs in the core portfolio, right? In this case, being compared to VTI, to the tune of over 16X for the minority empowerment ETF and over 6x more expensive for the gender diversity ETF. And just to be clear here, these are just the fund level fees, right, for these funds. They have nothing to do with Betterment, right? Betterment charges you the same uh, fee, right, whether you do socially responsible or not. I'll talk about Betterment's fee here in a bit, right? Um, same Betterment fee, 
right? I'm just talking about the ETF fund level fees here. Now, going back to the Betterment Socially Responsible uh, Investing option as a whole, you can also choose climate impact. Betterment says with this option, you can invest in ETFs that support companies with lower carbon emissions and the funding of green projects. It also features ETFs that divest from holders of fossil fuel reserves. Uh, with the broad impact here, it looks like you get a mix of the climate and social impact and also governance. Um, all right, let's move on from the socially responsible investing for now. Like I said, I'm just going to do the uh, the Betterment core portfolio here, the basic one. So I click continue. Then I'm taken to this screen where it says confirm goal details. The curious thing here is that it says general investing. Uh, that's the nickname for the account. And then underneath that $10,000, that's the target amount I put. But then it says by 2054. I didn't input 2054. Um, I mean, I figured they, they calculated that because that's when Caroline will turn 65 years old. And I guess Betterment is saying, uh, you know, that should be her retirement age theoretically. So I guess that's the deal with that. Uh, now, in light of that, only having saved $10,000 by age 65 is, is pretty low, especially considering inflation. But I can't even change this date, right? This 2054 is just what Betterment gives me. So that's... Uh, I don't know, kind of lame in my opinion. I tried to change it and I couldn't. The only options are to change the nickname for the account, right? Or as Betterment calls it, the goal name and the target amount. There's no separate input for the date. I thought maybe if I changed the goal amount, it, it would change the date as well. So I changed the goal amount to $100,000 rather than just $10,000. That didn't change the date at all. Anyway, scrolling down, we can see some more detail on the portfolio that Betterment has come up with. If I click change next to Betterment core portfolio, it's interesting because here Betterment actually presents me uh, with more options than it did when I was first setting up the investing account. Yeah, there's the Betterment portfolio, which somewhat confusingly is the same as Betterment core portfolio. I mean, I was 99% sure that was the case, but I wasn't completely sure, but I did confirm this, right? And I didn't show this in the recording, uh, but when I tried try to change my portfolio and here from the Betterment core portfolio to this Betterment portfolio, Betterment told me they're the same exact thing. Um, so I'm gonna stick with the Betterment core portfolio, but just to show you your other options here of how you can set your portfolio up in Betterment, you can also set your account to just entirely be in cash. Uh, I would not recommend that long term. Uh, the next option here is called uh, Betterment Cash, right? Where 100% of your fans uh, of your funds will be held in cash, earning at the time of recording 0.3% uh, APY. Of course, that interest rate is variable; it can go up or down at any time. There's also the socially, uh, socially responsible investing portfolio that I discussed previously. You can also utilize a Goldman Sachs Smart Beta portfolio. What is this? Well, you can read Betterment's article on it. Link to that in the description below. Uh, but to give this context, let's talk about how many index fund ETFs work, and that is they're weighted by market capitalization, meaning that larger companies' performance drives the performance of the ETF more so than smaller companies in the index. But as it says in the Betterment article, the Smart Beta portfolio strategy seeks higher returns by moving away from market capitalization weightings in and across equity asset classes. Maybe I'll do a separate video at some point about smart beta, uh, but I think that's the beyond the scope of this Betterment review video. So in the interest of time, I'm going to move on. The next portfolio you could use is the BlackRock Target Income Portfolio, which is a 100% bond portfolio. That's obviously much too conservative for individuals as young as my wife and I are. Uh, then lastly here, you can design a flexible portfolio, which basically means you tell Betterment what percentage of your portfolio you want in stocks, what percent in bonds, et cetera, rather than just trusting Betterment's robo-advisor algorithm. I was tempted to just put 100% stocks because in one's early 30s, uh, just my opinion, but I personally don't think my wife and I need to be in bonds right now. But just for the sake of this review and also for the sake of comparing Betterment's recommended portfolio to its main competitor, Wealthfront's recommended portfolio, so I can do a comparison video between the two, I'm just going to go with the Betterment recommended portfolio, which as you will see shortly here is 90% stocks and 10% bonds. There's some on-screen questions here underneath the portfolios. Uh, the first is whether you can change a portfolio strategy later. Betterment says yes, yes, you can do that. Um, obviously, if you change the makeup of your portfolio, you know, selling certain funds in your portfolio and buying new ones, this will have tax effects, right? If you're doing it in a tax account, Betterment says uh, they will basically show you, though, the potential capital gain you would recognize on the sale before you press the button to go through with it. Betterment also clarifies that the portfolio you choose here is goal specific. So, for example, uh, this thing, this goal, right, right now is the general investing goal. But if you set up a separate goal in Betterment, say to save for a house down payment, you know, to buy a house in a year or two, you, you might you might want to be all cash and you could do that with a separate goal. All right, now going back to the main screen, there's another option underneath the portfolio choice, that is your stock bond allocation. 
So how Betterment works by default is as you age uh, and draw closer to retirement, theoretically your portfolio should become more conservative, i.e. more of it in bond. So Betterment will automatically make that adjustment called rebalancing for you over time if you have this auto adjust button on. However, you want to do your own thing, so to speak. You can change your allocation. There's a sliding scale there. If you want less risk, um, that means more bonds, at least theoretically speaking, and more risk means more stock. So you could set yourself uh, at a 100% stock portfolio if you wanted to. Frankly, at my age, that's what I would typically do. But I do want to track the Betterment recommended portfolio over time compared to the market so that I can continue to do updates on how this Betterment account is doing year after year versus the market as well as versus Wealthfront. So I'm going to keep it on auto adjust. One last thing here is below the target allocation stuff, you can see some information about your portfolio. You'll see three tabs down there, projections, holdings, and allocation over time. The projections tab is interesting. It's basically showing you uh, what you can expect your portfolio to return over time. None of this is guaranteed, by the way, but this is saying with the portfolio you've set up in Betterment, in this case, the Betterment core portfolio with a 90-10 stock bond allocation, your one-year rate of return based on historical averages could be anywhere from negative 14 0.9% to positive 27.4%. Um, but over time, Betterment is saying from now until the year 2054, again, looking at historical averages, a reasonable expectation for the average annual return over that time period is 6.1%, making average cumulative returns through 2054 619.35%. There's also some expected cumulative uh, returns given a very good case scenario and a very bad case scenario. Again, this isn't really a prediction. It's just kind of interesting, right? And I'm sure it's just based on historical averages. And in the holdings tab, you can see the specific ETFs that make up your Betterment portfolio. I'm not sure how these are arranged, but you can see the first ETF there is EMB, symbol EMB. Uh, so this is saying that 1.5% of your portfolio is in EMB, which is apparently the iShares, JP Morgan, USD Emerging Markets Bond ETF, which is uh, a bond fund for government bonds issued by emerging market countries. Emerging market, of course, means developing nations um, that are becoming more and more involved in the global financial scene. If you look at the holdings for this particular ETF, you can see some of the countries here, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, Turkey, Russia, the Philippines, Colombia, Brazil. Um, note that the expense ratio on this bond fund has actually been on the high side, 0.39%. Frankly, at my age, if I wasn't doing this for review purposes, I, I probably wouldn't have this fund as a part of my portfolio at all quite frankly. Uh, but because I want to compare my betterment portfolio with the total stock market as a whole over time, I'm going to roll with it. So that's the holdings tab. I would encourage you to check that out. Check out all or at least uh, the major ETFs in your portfolio. And finally, the allocation over time tab simply shows you the betterment auto adjust allocation over time by year. So you can see in the near future, it will remain 90% stocks, 10% bonds, then gradually increase the bond allocation, um, then hold fairly consistently at a little less than 60% stocks and a bit more than 40% bonds. All right, next thing I did in Betterment is explore my investing goals back on the main screen. You're prompted to do this, so I clicked on the button. Uh, first, you confirm what you told Betterment. Then you tell Betterment about any children you have so they can recommend investing for their education. Uh, they ask you if you own a home, your goal you want to achieve through investing, and then as a result, Betterment gives you recommendations for the kinds of uh, goals you should set up in Betterment. You know, They call these goals. I think they're actually separate accounts. Uh, they might not technically be separate, separate accounts in all cases, um, but in our case here, Betterment is recommending we have a cash reserve, an emergency fund, retirement, and college funds for our children. Now, I want to note here that Betterment isn't necessarily saying, hey, you need to set up all these accounts with us, although they kind of imply that later, as I'll talk about. Uh, but for example, if you drill down on retirement, Betterment says, hey, we can help get your full retirement picture combining and reti any retirement accounts you set up in Betterment and also viewing them in the aggregate with retirement accounts you have elsewhere. Uh, that's why it says sync non-Betterment accounts like your current 401k to get holistic advice on allocations, funds, the right amount to save, and which account types to use to help maximize your money. Um, and this speaks to the holistic, right? Holistic nature of what Betterment is trying to do. Um, Betterment is granted in an algorithmic way, um, trying to take the place of a human advisor, right? It's not like Robin Hood where, okay, you sign up, you buy the stocks, you sell the stocks. Betterment is trying to be your hub for all things personal finance and give you a comprehensive look and analysis um, and not just the funds you have at Betterment, though obviously they would prefer you have as much money as possible at Betterment, uh, but your entire financial picture, if that makes sense. There are other goals you can add here in Betterment, saying for a new car, vacation, home renovation, some others. I just pick vacation because that's always on my mind and something we definitely want to do 
this year. All right, so once you got all those questions answered, uh, the next step is to make an initial deposit into your Betterment account. Betterment told me you must verify your email before setting up a deposit. So I went to the email used for this account, clicked the button to verify the email, uh, then I was ready to make a deposit. So I click connect a bank account. Betterment uses Plaid to do this as most other uh, investing platforms do. So they want to text a code to authenticate. So I click text me, I input the six digit code where I want it, then I click connect instantly. Betterment tells me it uses Plaid to connect my bank account. That's fine, I click get started. I select my bank, Chase, and put user ID and password. I do the text message verification code thing. Then my Chase accounts are connected. I indicate that it's the checking account I wanna to use to fund my Betterment account. I click select, and there you go. So originally I was thinking I would just deposit $1,000 and see how it performs over time. But I think was probably a better, more useful analysis for the pr purpose of this review video, as well as future review videos I do on Betterment, is to deposit $100 a month into Betterment, right? And see how it does. I'm also gonna do the same for Wealthfront too, FYI, to compare them. Um, and it's kind of fun, right? Uh, down there, they project your balance at your target year. Uh, again, you don't set the target year yourself here. And just quick and dirty, uh, probably based on average uh, annual returns historically, Betterman is calculating, hey, if you keep this up, just depositing $100 a month into your account, month after month, based on historical average stock market returns for a portfolio like yours, you'll end up with $126,255.92 in the year 2054. And if you think about it, that's pretty remarkable, right? The amount of money you would be putting in during that time period is 100 a month, right? So $1,200 a year times 33 years as $39,600. But due to growth in the market, it becomes 126 grand over time. That's the power of compounding returns. That's why I put as much as possible as I can into the market because I know that it will grow over time in the long run. It might go down in the short run, but in the long run, it'll grow. So I set the Betterment uh, deposit up for $100 a month on the 15th of each month. Betterment reminds me that I can skip any upcoming deposit if I need to. Then I review the deposit and click Submit Deposit and I'm taken back to the home screen. I think the reason it still prompts for a deposit here is because I didn't do an initial one-time deposit, right? It was just the monthly deposit I set up. So I'm gonna click Skip for now because my money will be in Betterment soon enough. Then it prompts me to consider rolling over an old retirement account to Betterment. I'm saying Skip for now. I'm pretty happy where our retirement accounts are right now. Uh, now Betterment tells me setup is complete. So I click OK, got it. Now at this point with the account set up, I'm actually gonna show you some screen recordings from my desktop computer because there are some things that are just easier to show you on desktop rather than mobile, okay? So I log into Betterment on desktop. It says good afternoon, very nice. And I click deposit in the upper right hand corner. Uh, this is where you can deposit money as I already showed you. Transfer or rollover is where you can roll over an account from somewhere else to Betterment. Withdraw is obviously where you can withdraw money from your Betterment account to your bank account. Uh, there is no money in this Betterment account at the moment, so I obviously can't do that. Um, they also feature their refer fin program up there. How does this referral program work? Well, unfortunately, it's not a cash referral program, but how it works is if you invite somebody to Betterment and they sign up and they fund a Betterment account, both of you get $5,000 managed free for a year. And your max as a refer is five referrals a year. So you can get up to $25,000 managed free in Betterment for a year. What is this actually worth? Well, as I'm gonna show you in a moment, uh, Betterment's fee on your Betterment investment account is 0.25% uh, a year, right? On all your assets you have managed by Betterment, 25 basis points. So the annual fee on $5,000 is $12.50, which is frankly pretty cheap. Um, and the maximum, of course, if you refer five friends a year, it's basically worth $62.50, right? Assuming you have at least $25,000 in your Betterment investing accounts that you'd be paying the fee on anyway. So this referral program isn't anything to write home about, in my opinion. So in the desktop app here, there are notifications that pop up at the top of the screen. I'll just walk through them here because they can actually serve to help me explain and review Betterment. Uh, there's a prompt here to set up a checking account with Betterment. I don't wanna do this, so I click dismiss. I'll talk a little bit more about their cash account later. Uh, then I'm prompted to earn cash back rewards and everyday purchases. What is this? This is basically, look, if you sign up for your Betterment checking account, they'll send you a, a Betterment debit card. And when you use that debit card at various establishments, you could get cash back. Right, And I was trying to figure out exactly what rewards you could get, but it sounds like in order to do that, you actually had to have the debit card first to see the cashback rates at various establishments. One thing to note here is that Betterment actually uses the Dosh cashback platform to generate the cashback rewards. Uh, I do use Dosh myself. 
link to DOS is in the description below, so just keep that in mind. Another thing to note is that the percentage you get back varies by establishment. It's not like a credit card, right, where you always get 4% back at, at restaurants and 3% back on travel or whatever. No, with this, it's, it's establishment by establishment, retailer by retailer, because that's how DOS works. Then I get a, uh, a prompt about socially responsible investing, which I've already discussed here. Next up is a prompt about tax loss harvesting. So what is tax loss harvesting? Tax loss harvesting is basically selling stocks at a loss, which generates a capital loss, that you can offset against capital gains you have during the year. And if you don't have any capital gains during the year or your losses exceed your capital gains for the year, you can offset up to $3,000 of your ordinary income, such as your W-2 wage income, with your capital losses right, with any excess over $3,000, because you can only deduct against your ordinary income $3,000 of capital losses, any excess is carried forward indefinitely to be applied against future capital gains and ordinary income. I explained this recently in my video on how I sold cryptocurrency at a loss just to buy it right back so I can use that loss to offset against my meme stock gains this year. Link to that video is at the top of the screen as well as in the description below. So if you turn on tax loss harvesting, then Betterment will automatically sell securities in your port in your account that have losses so you can use them on your tax return. The thing to watch out for with tax loss harvesting um, is if you're already in a 0% capital gains bracket, right? If this is the case, the tax loss harvesting doesn't make any sense. Maybe you'll get a little bit of a benefit from a state income tax perspective, but it doesn't really make sense from a federal income tax perspective. Also, when you do tax loss harvesting, you got to watch out for the wash sale rules. What are these? These are the rules that say if you sell a stock or another kind of security for a loss and you buy the stock back or a substantially identical security back 30 days uh, after or before the sale, you can't take that loss. It just increases your basis in the stock. But you don't want to be sitting in cash, right, for 30 days after you sell because that's time you're, you're sitting out of the market and missing out on potential gains. So how does Betterment get around this? Well, with Betterment, uh, your investment is all in ETFs, right? So what Betterment does is if you sell ETF1, they'll reinvest uh, the proceeds into a similar but not identical ETF, right? IRS hasn't quite ruled on this. Are those considered identical ETFs or not if they track the same index? But that seems to be what Betterment does uh, when it comes to tax loss harvesting. Betterment also talks about some more advanced tax loss harvesting strategies as well. You can check them out in an article on Betterment's website that is linked in the description below. So, you know, I see value in tax loss harvesting. <clears throat> so I click get started, right, with the tax loss harvesting. Betterment gives me a bit more information about tax loss harvesting here. Then I click see if it's right for you. They confirm some financial information because obviously this only makes sense uh, if you're at least at a certain tax bracket. Then I click enable TLH plus, that's tax loss harvesting plus. There I go all it takes. And I click close to go back to the main account screen. Uh, the next thing Betterment prompts me to do is to sync external accounts. By external accounts, uh, they obviously mean non-Betterment accounts. This goes back to what I was saying before about Betterment wanting to be a kind of a hub, so to speak, when it comes to your financial life. Not only does it want to invest the money you deposit into Betterment itself, but it also wants to have a view of the other investments you have in other non-Betterment accounts to better serve you within Betterment itself if that makes sense. So I decided to test how seamless this integration is with other accounts. So I click sync now, uh, similar to linking your bank account, Betterment uses Plaid to link external investment accounts. So I click get started, typed in the brokerage I wanted to connect, M1 Finance, then I logged in with my M1 Finance credentials and voila, success. By the way, M1 Finance is a great platform that I am using more and more to dollar cost average into the market. If you'd like to learn more about M1 Finance, check out my full M1 Finance review, link at the top of the screen as well as in the description below. Um, so yes, the, the betterment syncing of external accounts is fairly seamless. It's pretty easy. It just uses Plaid. No hiccups there. Uh, but then after you actually link your external accounts to Betterment, Betterment wants you to go through each one and confirm or add details about each one. So I did that. I click confirm details uh, for this account here from N1 Finance. Basically, wants me to confirm the details of each account, right? No surprise there. Wants me to tell Betterment for each account whether to show it or hide it in Betterment, whether to assign it to one of my Betterment goals I created in Betterment. Wants to know the account type, the account owner, how much it's contributed annually to this account, uh, and the advisor fee, if any. So I basically go through and complete this information for each of the M1 Finance accounts that I linked to Betterment. Just to clarify here, this is not to transfer M1 Finance accounts to Betterment, right? That's a different screen. This is just to show you in Betterment and to let Betterment know about these other non-Betterment accounts you have out there, right? Because that could possibly inform how Betterment invests your money. And to be completely clear again, you know, just because you have these accounts linked in Betterment, Betterment cannot go into your external accounts and buy and sell in your external accounts as it pleases. No, this is just for the sake of displaying these accounts in Betterment as a part of your net worth and to help Betterment 
better allocate and robo advise uh, the assets you have that are controlled in Betterment. So when I was done with that, I went back to the home screen. The next thing I was prompted to do was review beneficiaries. What does this mean? What is a beneficiary? Uh, a beneficiary is simply the person who you say will get the assets in this account if you pass away, right? If you pass away, your beneficiary can simply prevent, uh, present the death certificate to the brokerage uh, and the assets are now in the beneficiary's name um, or the beneficiary can uh, request liquidation, right, to cash out. Um, so we added me as a primary beneficiary on this account, you know, because this is Caroline's account, it used to make sense to add the spouse. Uh, contingent beneficiaries down there, that's at the primary beneficiary. Beneficiaries die before the account owner does, then the account goes to the contingent beneficiary or beneficiaries. And back at the home screen, there's a prompt to roll over a 401k. I didn't do that. Then a prompt to open a joint investment account. I click not right now. Uh, and then this prompt is interesting. It says, more financial questions? Talk to an advisor. Our premium plan comes with unlimited access by phone and email to certified financial uh, certified uh, financial planner professionals who can provide more personalized guidance on your financial situation. Get retirement planning help, create an education savings plan, or ask questions about any other topic on your mind. So I wanted to learn more about this, so I clicked learn more, and here's a breakdown. Um, so here are the two plans, right, in Betterment. The digital one is the default one. Uh, that's the one that I've been talking about. The premium one is the one where you get all the, the digital plan plus unlimited access to a, a financial planner, a human, um, as described in the prompt. Before we get to that financial planner access plan, let's talk about the fee structure of the basic plan. You can see here a 0.25% annual fee. This fee is on the investing asset that Betterment invests for you. It's not on your Betterment checking account if you set up the banking option. It's not on your external accounts. It's just on your Betterment investing account. So what does this look like in dollar terms? Well, if you have $1,000 uh, invested in Betterment, your fee is $2.50 a year, right? If you have $10,000 managed by Betterment, your fee is $25 a year. If you have $100,000 managed by Betterment investing, your fee is $250 a year and so on and so forth. But if you want access to what you can get with this basic Betterment plan, plus you want unlimited access to a CFP, whom you can call at any time, you would upgrade to the premium plan. This has an annual fee of 0.4%, 40 basis points. Also, you must have at least $100,000 in Betterment in order to be eligible for this upgrade. They obviously don't want someone to open up a Betterment account with 10 bucks and say, hey, I'll pay four cents a year for unlimited access to a financial planner. So they do have that minimum there. I personally don't have any experience with Betterment certified financial planners. <clears throat> I can't really speak to this from experience, but it seems like a pretty cool and relatively affordable option if you truly get uh, unlimited access to a CFP. If anybody out there signed up for Betterment Premium, I'd be very curious how your experience went. Was it good? Were they too salesy for Betterment itself? Please let me know in the comments below. Going back to the home screen, the next prompt I got was to add a spouse's account or accounts to Betterment to make sure their transactions in their accounts won't blow the tax loss harvesting uh, if we file jointly. Next prompt was to roll over an old retirement plan might make sense, might not. This is probably beyond the scope of this video. The next prompt was to set up something called a tax coordinated portfolio, which Betterment claims will boost after tax returns up to 15% over three decades. What is this? Well, this is basically Betterment organizing your portfolio so the assets that generate the most taxable income, such as say bond ETFs that you know pay you a relatively high yield, right? Or if you're in dividend ETFs that spin off higher dividends and other ETFs in your portfolio, these are high tax assets. So uh, Betterment would put these assets in accounts um, uh, that are tax advantaged, right? Put these high tax assets in tax advantaged accounts like your IRAs while keeping your investments that generate less taxable income, like a growth ETF or a small cap ETF, in your taxable brokerage account because those ETFs will pay out less in dividends. That's all this is talking about. So we obviously didn't set up a retirement account at Betterment, <clears throat> so this really wouldn't work in our situation here. But at least on its face, this sounds like a sound option for those of you who do choose to use Betterment for retirement account. Then Betterment prompted me to set up a safety net goal. This is basically just an emergency fund. I imagine many of you already have an emergency fund. And if that's the case, you can just link that account to Betterment as your safety net goal. So Betterment knows you have it. All right, so those are all the prompts. Now let's dig into the net worth figure here. Betterment shows you your total net worth based on what Betterment knows. Uh, basically, the, the Betterment accounts you have plus your linked accounts. Um, also shows you your Betterment specific balance, how much of your net worth is in Betterment accounts only. Um, you can click see breakdown to see, well, the breakdown. While we're here, let's talk about the Betterment cash reserve account. This is basically a uh, for lack of a better word, a high yield account, right? Uh, right now at the time of recording, it's paying 0.3% APY. Let me just say this probably isn't the highest APY you could find right now in a cash account. You could probably go out right now and find something at maybe half a percent right now, right? In some high yield savings account. Um, but there are some advantages to the Betterment Cash Reserve. For one thing, it's probably obvious, but it's 
in the Betterment ecosystem, right? So it obviously integrates very well with your other Betterment accounts. For another, there are no limitations on moving money out of this account. On its website, Betterment says, you can move your money as often as you want. No limits on how often you can move money and no fees to do so. This is different uh, than most other high yield savings accounts because with, with savings accounts, Federal Reserve Board Regulation D says you can't make more than six withdrawals or transfers per month out of your savings account. Same is true for money market accounts, by the way. Um, so going back to the home screen, if you scroll down, you'll see the goals you have set up in Betterment. We've already covered general investing. Uh, it now says goal achieved because I linked my M1 finance account and indicated some of them as part of this goal, general investing. Uh, then underneath the next goal on the list, uh, vacation, I clicked finish setting up. I was surprised that it basically just asked me to open up an investing account. I would have thought it would prompt to open a savings account, but maybe what they do is if you're saving for a short-term goal, they have your investments account set up to invest very conservatively, but they're also able to collect the fee on that, of course. Uh, there is another general investing goal here, I'm not sure why. Then we have the education accounts, the college funds. And again, I was surprised slash concerned they promised uh, that they prompted to set me up with a taxable brokerage account here. I would prefer 529, this is specifically for education, but of course, Betterment does not offer 529s. And I could see how someone who doesn't know about 529s and all that could just blindly set up a taxable brokerage account here in Betterment because Betterment prompted them to do so when really a 529 plan would be a better fit for them. So this is kind of a strike against Betterment, right? This is the one thing that made me question whether they're always operating in the user's best interest because obviously if the user sets up a taxable brokerage account through Betterment to save for the child's education, the money in that account is subject to Betterment's 0.25% fee. But something like a 529 plan, which Betterment doesn't offer and might actually be better if you're going to earmark an account for a child's college education anyway, a 529 plan, right, would, would probably be better than setting up a taxable brokerage account in some cases, right? If you don't know the benefits of 529 plans, check out my dedicated video on 529 plans, like at the top of the screen and in the description below. I'm just saying, if, if I were setting up a platform like this, and if I had this section here that said, hey, college fund for your kid... I would first make sure they know that a 529 might be better than setting up a taxable brokerage account through my app, right? Um, even if I didn't have a partnership with a 529 plan provider, I'd still say, hey, it might be in your best interest to look into 529 plans before setting up this taxable brokerage account here for us. That's all I'm saying. Uh, then we have retirement where you actually prompted to set up retirement accounts because Betterment, of course, does offer IRAs. So if you click personalize this goal, you can see the types of retirement accounts that Betterment offers, including traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, and SEP IRAs. It also gives you the option of setting up taxable accounts. Not too sure why you do that for retirement. If you're willing to stash away money for retirement and not touch it for decades, might as well get the tax advantages that come with an IRA. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, a traditional IRA gives you a tax deduction for your contribution now, assuming you're eligible, and your investments grow tax deferred in the account. Then after you turn 59 and a half, you can take money out without penalty, but you do have to include the amount you take out you know, uh, on your tax return as taxable income. With a Roth IRA, you don't get a deduction for the amount you put in now, but when you eventually take money out in the future, you get to take it out tax-free. If you want more information on traditional IRAs versus Roth IRAs, be sure to watch my video comparing the two. Link is in the description below. A SEP IRA is like a traditional IRA, but it's for business owners. I'll probably do a dedicated video on SEP IRAs at some point. Then we have the safety net goal. This is basically just your emergency fund. Again, I think it's interesting here that similar to saving for the vacation goal, your options are taxable investment accounts and not a cash account. All right, now let's explore the left sidebar here. We've already covered the goals that are at the top of the left sidebar. Now let's go down to transfers. This is just another place where you can initiate deposits or withdrawals to or from Betterment. Nothing fancy here. Under activity, you'll find, well, your activity. In this case, the only thing we have in this account is setting up the brokerage account. Under documents, you can find your statements, uh, your tax documents and other documents that are obviously none generated at this point for this brand new account. One thing I do like here is that if you click tax documents and then realized gain loss, Betterment can generate your year to date security sales report so you know how much gain you'll have to report on your tax return up until this point in the year, right? You might have more gains later this year, but that's helpful to do tax planning throughout the year as I like to do for myself and my clients. Uh, Robinhood, for example, doesn't do that, right? Um, you can also download your cost basis and your investments and see a record of year-to-date dividends paid to your account as well. This obviously affects your taxes, right? And you can use this report to do tax planning as well. Back on the left sidebar under settings, you can update your personal information, your plan, your trusted contact, 
maybe I should add myself here, uh, your beneficiaries, your connected external accounts, you can change your password, stuff like that. Then if you click on ask an advisor, I thought this was just gonna be you know, pitching Betterment Premium that we already talked about, right? Which has the fee of 0.4% of assets under management. But this is actually something different. Um, there are two options here. One is Betterment's concierge services, which helps you transfer assets to Betterment, making sure you don't trigger any taxable events, right? Say you're doing a rollover from an old employer's 401k, you wanna roll that over into a Betterment IRA, make sure you're doing everything right there, stuff like that. Uh, and if you're wanting to transfer at least $100,000, this is complimentary, right, this concierge service. Uh, so that's the option one they're presenting here. There's also option two, which is actual financial advice you pay for at an hourly rate. So this is different, right, than getting the unlimited access to certified financial planner professionals for 40 basis points, 0.4% uh, of your assets under management. This is if you don't have that Betterment premium plan and you're willing to pay a CFP or you're willing to pay Betterment uh, an hourly rate for a consultation with the CFP. It looks like they have different um, kind of plans here. One is just getting started, which I imagine is pretty basic. That's a 45 minute call for $299. Then there are also these hour long calls for $399. They have retirement planning, financial checkup, college planning, and marriage planning. You just select the option, book time on the calendar there, and that's that's what it is, right? Uh, then under rewards on the left sidebar, there are some other things to check out in terms of rewards. First of which is the cash back on everyday purchases using your Betterment Visa debit card that I already discussed previously in this video. There's also this cell phone protection where if you get a Betterment checking account, you get the Betterment Visa card and you pay your cell phone bill with the Betterment Visa debit card, then you get up to $600 per cell phone claim for damage or theft with a $50 deductible. You can make a maximum, you can make a maximum of two claims per year. I don't personally have experience with this, but if anybody does have experience with this, right, you've actually filed a claim under this Betterment cell phone protection here, please let me know in the comments how that went. There's also the refer, uh, refer a friend bonus that I talked about previously, and that's it. Uh, that's Betterment. That concludes the walkthrough portion of this Betterment video. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discuss the pros and cons of Betterment. Um, and then after that, discuss some examples of kinds of people and situations I think Betterment would be a good fit for, as well as examples of people and situations that I think Betterment would not be a good fit for. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one, I like the holistic aspect of Betterment. Betterment really wants to quarterback, in a sense, your financial life kind of like a professional financial advisor would. This could be a con because obviously Betterment wants to make money off you and get as much of your assets as possible managed by Betterment so they can collect fees on the money you have in Betterment. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, under the cons, but still from what I could tell, Betterment seems to do a decent job of you know presenting this holistic financial framework through which to view your situation in a convenient way. Pro number two, Betterment's fee is actually pretty low. 0.25%, 25 basis points. That's really not a lot of money for the service it provides, uh, which is not only the robo-advising and adjusting your portfolio to match your asset allocations, but also giving you at uh, this high level, right, what you should be thinking about in terms of your finances. In terms of the premium plan for 40 basis points, I don't have experience with it, can't really speak directly to that, but it does seem quite affordable to me, of course, depending on the quality of service provided. Pro number three, Betterment for the most part, invest your money in low cost index fund ETFs, especially Vanguard index fund ETFs. And I like that. I'm a big fan of Vanguard uh, index fund and index fund ETFs. So that's a plus in my book. Pro number four, Betterment has no account minimums. You can get started today with what you have. Pro number five, Betterment does integrate some sophisticated tax planning techniques like tax loss harvesting and what it calls a tax coordinated portfolio, both of which I discussed previously in this video. Now let's talk about the cons of Betterment. Con number one, everything that Betterment can do for you for a fee you could do on your own for free. If you were willing to take a little time to research this stuff, you could do all the stuff that Betterment does without paying the 25 basis point fee. Con number two, there could potentially be conflicts of interest between what's best for you and what's best for Betterment. Remember, Betterment wants to manage as much of your money as possible because that's how it makes money. So for example, with the education goal example I set up, when I went to finish setting up that goal, Betterment didn't mention the 529 plan. It just wanted to funnel me directly into a taxable brokerage account that Betterment could manage because Betterment can't make money, right, if I run off and set up a 529 plan somewhere else, right? Con number three, there were some elements of the setup process that confused me a little bit. For example, at the beginning, uh, when I was first setting up the account and had to input the target amount, it didn't give me a date by which I want to hit the target amount. It was just like, okay, input your target amount here. Then after I set it up, it assigned me a target date of 2054 that I 
could it change? There are other slightly confusing things with the setup as well, like the fact that when Betterment referred to the Betterment core portfolio and the Betterment portfolio, that, that was referring to the same exact thing. So in my opinion, a few tweaks could be made uh, to the setup process and interface to make it a little less confusing. And here's uh, yeah, my toddler, because this is the reality of working from home with a toddler. But cloud number four, uh, the Betterment referral program is pretty lackluster. It's worth like, what, $12.50? <coughs> Bless you, was that it per referral? <coughs> And it's not even cash referral, right? It's just uh, a credit against your Betterment management fee. So um, those are the pros and cons of Betterment. Now let's talk about who I think Betterment is a good fit for and who I think Betterment may not be the best fit for. So situation number one, where I think Betterment is a good fit is if you have accounts all over the place and you kind of want to get a view of them all under one roof uh, and get them all in front of you and get advice in the aggregate, right? Or at least robo advice about how to manage your money. That sounds like you. Betterment is probably a good fit. Betterment is also a good fit for those, uh, especially in higher tax brackets, who could benefit from Betterment's kind of automated tax tools like tax loss harvesting and making sure tax high tax assets are in tax free or tax deferred accounts. This isn't to say that those in lower tax brackets or those just starting out uh, with investing won't benefit from Betterment. They will, but there are additional features of Betterment that are particularly well suited to those in higher tax brackets and who already have a bit of wealth. Situation number three, where I think Betterment is a good fit for you, is if you just want to set up your investment somewhere and set it and forget it, right? You just want to keep on feeding the Betterment machine, putting as much money into it as possible and watching it grow over time without too much hands-on on your part. Because that's what Betterment wants you to do, right? It wants you to take your money, put it in Betterment, and let better Betterment grow it for you without you tinkering too much with what's going on behind the scenes. All right, now let's talk about a couple situations where Betterment probably isn't the best fit for you. Situation number one, where I think you might want to look somewhere else, is if you're extremely fee sensitive and you're willing to manage your own investments because like I said previously anything you can do in Betterment you can do elsewhere for free it's just that Betterment in a sense does it for you for its 25 basis point fee situation number two where I think Betterment might not be the best fit for you is if you want to do active trading right Betterment is not for you if you want to buy and sell individual stocks all day long because that's simply impossible to do in Betterment you're simply limited to ETFs with Betterment all right folks so this concludes my Betterment review if after watching this review video you think Betterment is a good fit for you I would be thrilled if you use my Betterment link in the description below if you do that you set up a Betterment account and deposit some money into it uh, the channel here will get a small commission this is no extra cost to you but help support me so i can continue creating content like this for you also if you want to check out another set it and forget it investment platform that charges uh no fees but is a little more hands-on check out my review of m1 finance right over here and if you want to see all the brokerage right brokerages right now giving away free stocks uh, be sure to check out this video uh, right down here and i'll see you in those videos Bye bye